Hot on camera, a car hits a school bus with students on board and the driver takes off. New information about injuries, the search for the driver, and what a neighbor heard. And we're live on UNC's campus ahead of another night of planned protests. I hope you've enjoyed spring because summer weather is coming in hot. I'll show you where temperatures are climbing and who will see rain this weekend. Breaking right now at 7, several students are hurt after a bus crash in Johnston County. This is video caught on a neighbor's surveillance wow. camera. It's unbelievable seeing the bus just veer right off the road after getting hit. Thanks for sharing your Friday with us. I'm Ashley Rowe. And I'm Dan Haggerty. So this is Webb Mill Road. You can check out the map here. Uh, that video still just sticks with you. 14 students on board that bus that you saw careen off the road there. The team, uh, our team has been covering this story for hours now. WRL's Carly Haynes is joining us live. Carly, you spoke with the person who captured that whole thing on that, that dramatic video. Uh, it, it was shocking for him, even more shocking when he watched that video back. The scene is cleared now, but it's hard to even believe how many people were here just about an hour ago. That ditch right there is where the school bus uh, actually fell over to off to the side after getting clipped. Uh, but I want to share that surveillance video that that neighbor shared with us. He said he was inside when this happened. He heard the loud crash, knowing it was a car crash, then looked outside, caught the tail end of it and couldn't believe that there was a school bus basically in his front yard. He called 911 and anxiously waited for help to come. As soon as everybody got here and, and we saw that the kids were okay, I think that's when I, I just kind of started to, to be like, okay, this is under control. They're checking on the kids. And the neighbor said that the driver then uh, ran out of his car, not the school bus driver, the actual car that clipped that school bus. That driver ran off into a wooded area. And right now, Highway Patrol Sheriff's Office, they're still looking for that person. And WRAL's Willie Danley was at the middle school where some of those students are being reunited with their families. This is Four Oaks Middle School. This is the school that that bus was traveling from when it got into that car accident. This is also where many parents came to pick up their students who were able to walk away from that crash uninjured. Take a look at this. This is Sky 5 video taken from above, and you can see the extent of this crash. We're being told by State Highway Patrol that this was a hit and run. The driver of that car pulled out aggressively onto Crocker Lane and hit the school bus. That driver then took off into the woods, causing sheriff deputies to search the area for him. Authorities do know who the suspect is and they do plan to serve him warrants. They just haven't found him yet. We do know that there were 14 students on that bus and eight of them were taken to the hospital to be treated for their injuries. We're working now to find out what the extent of those injuries are. We're going to keep you updated with anything that we know. Back to you. All right, Willie, thank you so much. Let's hope everybody is okay. Mm -hmm. So no rain in store for your Friday night, but the same can't be said for your weekend. The showers are expected to start overnight and continue into tomorrow. Meteorologist Mike Mays is in the WRL Severe Weather Center. Mike, time it all out for us. Uh, just a few isolated showers this evening and overnight. A greater chance tomorrow. The live dual Doppler 5000 radar showing some rain in our western viewing area. Uh, parts of Chatham County, Alamance County, we've been following these all afternoon. For Raleigh and points eastward, nothing going on. Most of the activity that we see this evening should hang off, all, off to the west. So watching for your weekend storms, uh, Saturday, 50% chance of showers and storms, some in the morning, but I think the more concentration would be late in the day and more likely into the evening where your 60% kicks in. Tomorrow's high 82. We had 90 today, so far cooler tomorrow because of the cloud cover, but it's still going to be humid, so it'll feel very warm. Sunday, partly to mostly cloudy, 50-50 shot at showers and storms. The high temperature about 81. Hour by hour, here are the rain chances for tomorrow, 30% in the morning, maybe a couple hours or it bumps up a little bit, and then heading into tomorrow evening, if you're heading out to dinner, rain chances are on the rise. Talk more about the weekend, including future cast for Sunday in less than 15 minutes, Ashley. Okay, Mike, thanks. Back to the protests now at UNC. Pro-Palestinian protesters expected to gather on UNC's campus. Video from this morning here. The groups then uh, marching down the street near the university before making their return tonight. Now, these protests, of course, come just a couple of days after they clashed with police. Some violent video here in these altercations. Dozens of people detained after an American flag was removed and replaced with a Palestinian flag there on the quad. Now those protesters are back. WRL's Aaron Thomas live for us at Chapel Hill along what has kind of become this, uh, this icon of this protest, which are these fences behind you. 
Yeah, that's correct, Dan. So, you know, of course, this has been the epicenter of where many of these protests have taken place. You can see these uh, fences are still in place. Setting the scene for you right now is definitely much calmer than what we've seen uh, over the past few days. We're actually seeing a lot more uh, graduating seniors take their uh, senior photos than we are demonstrators. If we can point the camera over here, we can actually see uh, roughly a dozen demonstrators or more that are now starting to show up uh, for these planned uh, demonstrations. Of course, there are those continued calls for UNC to divest from any companies uh, with any time. Ties uh, to Israel, and then a lot. They're also calling for this building next door, the campus, why to reopen. But in an email obtained by WRAL, the university sent out notification to the student body that this uh, building, campus Y, also known as a social justice hub, does plan to reopen this upcoming Monday. Uh, as I look around campus, this quad area, I am also seeing at least uh, three police cars, UNC police cars, and I also am seeing some officers that are surrounding the quad. So, of course, you can now see the demonstrators that are slowly starting to trickle in. And, of course, we will continue to monitor, monitor this situation as it develops. Back to you. All right, Aaron Thomas, we'll continue to check in with you live at Chapel Hill. Thank you, Aaron. Statewide flags are at half staff to honor four officers killed in Monday's shooting in Charlotte. Today, a procession recognized the life and work of Officer Sam Pelosi. Pelosi's body was carried from the medical examiner's office to a funeral home in Charlotte. We are still awaiting details on his funeral service. Officer Pelosi's procession comes just hours after thousands of people joined together to celebrate the life of Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer Joshua Iyer. He was also killed in that shooting. WRL's Matt Tallhelm tells us Iyer was remembered as a selfless hero. I may not be able to get through this, but I want to try. It takes a wife's willpower. I know so many of you here today knew Joshua well. To share with a crowd of hundreds the intimacies of life and loss. It's cliche, but I know the reason our love is so special is because he is and always will be my very, my very best friend. Ashley Iyer stood behind her husband's flag-draped casket, flanked by a family photo and another of the 31-year-old in the police uniform he last put on for duty Monday. Officer Iyer, you represent everything great about this badge I wear over my heart and this patch I wear on my sleeve. The six-year veteran of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Force is remembered as a selfless, humble hero. Officer Nicholas Ferreira worked by his side from their training days together in the academy. He gave his all until the very end, and we owe it to him and the others tragically killed to pick up where they left off. That legacy lives on in the three-year-old son he leaves behind, a son distracted during this service by a smartphone from the loss he's too young to comprehend. We won't let you down, okay? <laughs> I love you so much, sunshine. I'll see you soon. That is our Matt Tallholm report. Breast cancer advocates are pushing state lawmakers to pass a bill that would make patients pay less for certain tests. House Bill 560 passed unanimously in the House and is now waiting to be heard in the Senate. It would require insurers to completely cover the cost of breast MRIs for those with plans that cover diagnostic imaging and supplemental exams. 22 other states have already passed similar legislation. All right, let's go in depth and into the mailbag tonight because I got a lot of feedback after last night's segment. After discussing the now half a million dollar GoFundMe for the UNC fraternity brothers being celebrated as patriots for protecting the U.S. flag and keeping it from the ground during tense protests on campus. The fraternity, the fraternity you may remember, surrounded the flag after protesters removed it and replaced it with the Palestinian flag. I use this scene here as an opportunity to discuss the irony of protesters removing the U.S. flag, which is literally a representation of their freedom to do so, to protest and speak, speak freely. But I also said that the flag doesn't really need to be guarded, that it's stronger than protests or disrespect, that it's a unifying symbol that represents all of our ideas and expressions, even the bad ones. Beth liked the piece. She said, thank you for your brave and very true words. I got a bunch of emails like those, people who loved the story, but who wants to hear the praise? That's kind of boring. Instead, I want to spend tonight talking about the people who hated it. Carol 
hated it with beautiful prose. She said, I can't begin to find any redeemable mental merit in your commentary. I find your shallow commentaries to be loaded with trivialities that lack understanding of what America meant to our forefathers and reveal a lily-livered lack of principles. Now, while that was a well-composed burn, I feel a bit misunderstood. So let's get completely transparent for a moment, something I don't usually do. I personally think that these young men did the right thing. They peacefully protected the flag and, and showed it respect, which I think it deserves. I also think it's wrong to mess with private property under the guise of protest. Free speech doesn't give you the right to take or damage other people's things. Though, to be fair, those are pretty easy opinions, don't you think? I mean, it's kind of the, the safe slam dunk of a take. Flag good, vandalism bad. But this segment is about going deeper, hence the name. I want to find the parts of the conversation that make us a little uncomfortable. It's more challenging. Richard said, I know that WRL has become very liberal over the years, but maybe they will fire you so we can have a better American reporting our local news. So acknowledging free speech during a conversation about protests and patriotism doesn't make me partisan or a bad American. I think it's the opposite. You see, free speech is a tough topic. The founders knew that, which is why it's number one, the First Amendment. Just look at the ACLU. They're a great example. They have been fighting politically incorrect fights for a long time. They call it defending speech we hate. I mean, this is an organization that nearly went bankrupt for supporting the free speech of Nazis to march through Skokie, Illinois in 1977, a town of 6,000 Holocaust survivors. You can find countless examples of these tough moments defending free speech. Free speech can be nasty business. Joseph wrote, it is obvious you've never been a member of the police or military, fought under that flag, or buried friends under that flag. This one's a tough one for me because I, you're right, I've never served. And nothing I have ever done in my life can compare to that sacrifice. But it doesn't change what the country stands for or represent everyone who served. Take Melissa, for example. She said, when I received my commission as an army officer, I took an oath to support and defend the US Constitution. The flag holds special meaning for me. As an army chaplain, I officiated funerals, standing beside flag-draped coffins of those with whom I had served. While it can be painful to watch the flag be treated poorly, I served to protect the right to free speech. It's neither Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal. It stands for our freedom to express all of those views. You see, you can find this deplorable. You can, you can get angry about it. It can make you furious, maybe. But to call it un-American is wrong. Lastly, there is one more thing that I got from a few people. Kyle said, you continuously called the men that held the flag off the ground frat boys. You should use the entire word fraternity. And that's pretty rich coming from someone who requires 10 pounds of hair gel a day. Kyle, this is a palmate, man. You're not going to get this kind of volume with a gel. Let me know what you think. You don't have to agree with me. You don't even have to like me. It doesn't matter. I will take you seriously, and I will listen. Email dan at wrl.com. Tell me what's on your mind, and we'll go in depth. Oh, you're not lily-livered. You're not at all. And, and Mike, neither are you, especially when you're delivering news about uh, inconvenient weather. Yes, and we've got a little bit of that going on out there right now. I don't have to worry about product, Dan. <laughs> these days anymore. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on. Uh, Chatham County, we're seeing some showers. Uh, Pittsburgh up toward Alamance County, over toward Siler City and Liberty. These are all drifting up toward the north. We only have about a 20% chance of rain as we head through the evening toward daybreak. The rain chances do increase. We have energy off to the west in the atmosphere that is making its way toward us, so the atmosphere will be more capable of producing some showers and storms with the heating of the day, plus far more cloud cover will be drifting in. Mostly cloudy tonight, partly to mostly cloudy tomorrow, likewise on Sunday and it won't be quite as hot. We had 90 today at RDU, 89 at Fayetteville. Now, we've had some prom kids come out in the WRL Gardens. They're not currently out there, but we have some other folks taking pictures. Great place to take family photos. We've got a lot of that going on lately. 85 out at RDU right now, the dew point 63, so it's feeling a little bit more muggy this evening, and ranging from 84 at Southern Pine, 78 at South Hill, 81 at Roxborough, 83 right now in Clinton. And our forecast 
has about a 20% chance for a shower through most of the night. It's toward daybreak. Rain chances go up a bit, 30 to 40%. And I think that's primarily going to be in our northern county. So if you're watching from Southern Pines, Fayetteville, Clinton, Goldsboro, you probably won't see any rain in the morning. So on Sunday, here is a look at future cast. We have partly to mostly cloudy skies from what I'm seeing right now, a dry start to the day. By lunchtime, a few spotty showers develop with the heating of the day kicking in. We'll see about a 50% chance of rain in the afternoon and into the evening overnight, perhaps rain chances falling off a bit. But from what we're seeing in the models for tomorrow and also on Sunday, does not look like a washout, but with the increased amount of cloud cover, it won't be hot. It will be very muggy though. So uh, govern yourselves accordingly. If you're going to Coleman Triangle Race for the Cure in the morning, come meet Lena and myself at the WRL tent. And if you're running and walking, just stay well hydrated. It will be muggy. It'll be warm. You'll probably be doing a lot of sweating. So shower possible this evening, more likely toward daybreak, low 60s to the north, mid 60s in Raleigh, 66 in Fayetteville. There's your forecast for Coleman Triangle Race for the QR 69 by 9, 73 by 11, 78 by 1 o'clock. So there is a small chance for a shower at this point. Ham and Yam Festival, again, a small chance of rain in the morning. If there is rain, it's going to be more likely north of you, north of Smithfield. But then during the afternoon, it's about a 30 to 40% chance. Tomorrow's high temperature about 82. And across the region, anywhere from 84 in Fayetteville, 77 South Hill, 74 Roxborough, 81 in Southern Pines. We do need this rain. It is awfully dry out there. We have many opportunities, but due to the nature of the way we see uh, rain this time of year for spring and summer, it's just more hit and miss. So your neighbor down the street could get rain. You may miss out, but we have many opportunities. Rain chance looks best on Monday, 83, 94. We're cooking next Wednesday and then increased chances for rain Thursday and Friday of next week. Still looking at a little cooling coming for Mother's Day weekend. All right. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. A $9.2 million senior center will soon open in Fayetteville. Ahead, we're going to take a look inside this brand new facility. A large crowd sat in the heat today to get a glimpse of Fayetteville's newest senior center. With the uh, snip of a, a few dozen pairs of scissors there, the new senior center east was open just off of Merkinson Road near Fayetteville State University. The $9.2 million center has tons of amenities. It looks good inside, a, a warm water swimming pool, fitness and exercise rooms, pool tables, even a kitchen inside. It's designed for seniors 55 years and older. The city plans to give tours of the facility tomorrow. It will open uh, tomorrow. What a great thing. That's amazing. Absolutely. So 4 p.m. Sunday. That is when the Carolina Hurricanes will take on the New York Rangers. Game one, round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I kind of like that 4 p.m. time. Me too. Games one and two of the series are at Madison Square Garden. The Canes made it look easy in their games against the Islanders in round one, but this series will be anything but. You've got great skill. you got a great power play. They'll make you pay if you make any kind of turnovers or any little plays that... Uh, um, that they're on top of, and um, so it can happen quick. So you got to be make sure every single little play is uh, is done right, and um, um, and obviously play uh, our style, just kind of wearing them down and uh, making them play defense. WRL has you covered with a post game show at 11:25. Join us for locker room reaction, comments from Coach Rod Brindamore, insight from Casey Hints at Madison, Madison Square Garden. We, uh, WRL exclusive post game coverage too. Good night. Have a great weekend. Watching WRL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.